Look, there's some crazy nonsense that Cleaver can get up to. This thing's got some amazing base attack at 135, along with some okay speed at 85. So you know that bad move Fury Cutter? Yeah, we're gonna use that. So Cleaver has the ability Sharpness, which boosts the power of slicing moves like Fury Cutter by 50%. Now, Fury Cutter is a 40 power move that's power doubles with each consecutive hit up to 160. Basically, you gotta spam it. We can throw on the held item Metronome, which increases damage of moves used on consecutive turns, maxing out at two times after five turns. We're gonna set up an agility to double our speed stat and allow it to outrun almost anything. And then it's gonna get interesting. We can go for Terra Bug to bring our same type attack bonus to two times, which means that the first initial Fury Cutter already becomes 120 power. After all the boosts with Sharpness, Metronome, and Terra factored in, if we can get to five consecutive Fury Cutters in a row, it becomes an absolute nuke at 960 power. And while this is mostly insanity, we're gonna try to get Cleaver to reach another level of damage. Look, here's the thing. Is this the most consistent and reliable competitive strategy? Absolutely not. But that's what we're all about over here, and it makes for an interesting time. If you're into that kind of thing, you should probably hit that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400,000, and I would love to have you as part of the journey. And now, with that, let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, so my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Arbeliva. Olive Tree's like, hey, take a look at these olives. Just displaying them proudly. And I have myself a nice little penguin who's here to set up some stealth rock. So, this is not the greatest matchup for me. It's mostly fine. I know that they do have coverage and things like an earth power. But I decide I'm just going to go ahead and set up the stealth rock and do my little penguin thing. So, they are actually just going to go right for that earth power, which I know I can take because I am especially defensive. It does less than half, but more importantly, it actually gets a special defense drop, which then activates my competitive. So... The accidental stat drop always is nice, and now gives me a nice little plus two to my special attack. And as I'm looking at this thing, I'm like, hey, you know, I do have the ice beam. I know I'm faster. I'm going to go ahead and beam it. You know, I got all that special attack. Why not use it? And as it turns out, th these things, I believe it just never dies. It, it always does end up tanking hits better than you imagine. So it is able to live, which activates the seed sower because I touched it. And now with that spadef drop, I do actually die to the earth power. So... That is, it's fine because I got some solid chip on the guy. And as I'm looking at it here, I'm like, hold on a sec. This is actually a pretty decent opportunity to bring in the cleaver and see if I can't get something going with our little sharp friend here. So I bring in the cleaver. And while I do know that they have a boosted Giga Drain with that grassy terrain up, I should be able to take at least one attack. And that's going to allow me to go for an agility. Now, I need two agility to make myself faster than you know, everything they have in the back, barring crazy scarfs. So I do actually go for that agility, get my speed rose sharply, we're feeling extra sharp today, and we are able to just barely hang on uh, to the Giga Drain. Now, the, the Drain does give him a solid amount of health back, but it's now time to go on a, a fury of, of cutting shenanigans. And here's how this is going to work out. I'm going to try to explain the damage multiplications and kind of as they happen. So, on this first Fury Cutter, I know that I should be in range to knock this thing out because of the super effective hit. It's a 40 base power move with the 50% boost with sharpness. That alone brings it into a 60 power move. Now, Metronome doesn't come into play until the second hit. However, that, with the stab included, that's still a 90 power hit. And honestly, kind of not horrible damage, you know, when you really factor everything in. So now as they decide to bring in the thickest boy Snorlax, we are in business. As I'm going to go ahead and activate Terra, that gives us a whole new level of, of nonsense. So here's the thing. The second consecutive Fury Cutter is by itself just an 80 base power move. Of course, then with Sharpness, we get that 50%, brings it to 120. Metronome is now going to give us that 1.2 times boost, bringing the total to 144. But that's before you factor in, since we went for the Bug Terra of our own type, we now get a 2 times boost, bringing it to a power of 288, which is crazy. Mostly, you need to know that we just delete the Snorlax. That is actually pretty wild. We also get the benefit of soaking up some free health from the, the grassy terrain, which is always nice. And as they now bring in Chinchino, I, of course, am agility and faster than the fella. And as much as you hate to do it, sometimes you gotta slice up the Chinchilla. Now, moral of the story, this becomes a 672 power move just by the third hit, which is actually insanity. So that just obviously kills the, <laughs> the Chilla. And meanwhile, we're just over here just slowly building ourselves back up in terms of health. Now, 
At this point, they bring in the Braviary, who is especially interesting because not only is this thing relatively bulky, it also, of course, resists the bug. But the strategy does not change, and at this point, we have 160 base power Fury Cutter. With the sharpness bringing us to 240, and the metronome now being 1.6 times, we've now got a total of 768 with the Terra Bug, and yeah, that is gonna be enough to kill that thing, especially after the Rocks Chip. And at this point, we have a fifth one locked and loaded, basically to just clean it up, as they probably did not expect the Fury Cutter to Fury Cut his ass up, so. As they go into the Porygon Z, we are nearing a thousand power on this hit, and they decide they're gonna just go ahead and, you know, save the life of their little rubber ducky friend. So Cleaver absolutely went crazy, and while you know, there's very many things that can go wrong in this situation. Sometimes it can go right, it turns out, and it's kind of crazy. So if you thought we were done there, you are incorrect, because we still got a little fury cutting to do, at least to see if we can try to get this going once again, and that's because it's absolutely insane. The, the, the damage multipliers are confusing on this, but it's all I'm saying is you don't want to be on the receiving end of this, especially if you don't have any priority or anything faster in the back, because it's wild. So... Let's go ahead and jump into the match. Also, hey, real quick, if you've made it this far into the video and you haven't hit that like button yet, go ahead and smash that button for me. It really does help out the channel. So, my opponent decided to lead off with Incineroar, which is actually solid for me because with Empoleon, I just immediately get competitive again. And friggin' Empoleon is feeling extra competitive today, which doesn't always happen, but it's nice when it does. So, they decide they obviously can't parting shot or anything. They're just gonna go ahead and hard switch out and they're gonna br bring in the Porygon too. So, this is a defensive fella that obviously can just take hits all day. I decided rather than going for Stealth Rock, I'm going to go ahead and use that special attack once more. And as the Surf isn't quite a two-hit KO, I'm actually, I'm going to go for the knockoff here. And that's just because Porygon 2 is always incredibly annoying and bulky with that Eviolite. And it, it, without it, at least, I can make it a bit more manageable. And they do, in fact, actually have the coverage, of course, with the Bolt Beam. It's going to have, it's going to have something for you. So it does do about half to me, which is kind of fine. I decided to take this opportunity to Stealth Rock. I imagine they probably think I'm going to go ahead and switch out, but I'm mostly just here to just kind of lay up some Stealth Rocks and just have, have a time. So as it turns out, they actually take this opportunity to go for a Trick Room, which I honestly did not really see coming, and that is going to throw a wrench in kind of the plans at least a little bit. So now the speed tiers are going to be reversed, and as Porygon 2 is now going to be faster, I decide I should probably just kind of just go for another Surf here, as I know I can take another T-Bolt. And looking at their squad, they do benefit a lot from their slower mons being able to benefit from the Trick Room. So I want to try to waste as much Trick Room as I possibly can. As we take care of the Porygon, which is also really good, they do in fact have the Hatterene in the back who can potentially set it back up. But at this point, they're kind of free to end up going into probably a slow Mammoth Vine who can... Um, obviously threatened me with an earthquake. So, I have an idea. I decided I'm actually going to go ahead and switch into the Galarian Zapdos, just because the earthquake is relatively obvious here. They want to take care of the Empoleon before I'm able to, you know, get off the surf. And as I bring in the Big-Footed Felon, the earthquake is obviously not going to affect it. Even though I'm standing directly on the ground, we we're still a flying type with these little-ass baby wings. So, I now realize that I'm still in threatened range of, you know, being hit by an ice attack. So, obviously, with Trick Room still being up, I am going to end up switching into the Klefki here because uh, the ice move is relatively obvious. They're going to go for the Avalanche. I'm able to take it nicely. And Klefki on this team plays the role of basically being a dual screen setter. I realize that one of the ways to effectively get Cleaver to actually pull this off is by being a little extra bulky. And as I go for the Reflect there with Prankster, I'm able to go first. And that Reflect is actually going to allow me to be able to just barely hang on uh, to that Earthquake, which is great because now the dimensions return to normal and as I know they can just finish me off with another earthquake I'm gonna take this free turn to set up a light screen just in case because now with that light clay item we're gonna have uh, double screens up for quite a bit here and that's gonna benefit our sharp boy quite a lot so uh, Mammal Swine is actually a pretty decent option for me to switch into a freaking cleaver here at least we're gonna give it a, you'll give it the old college try and we're out here with our freaking axes ready to go for it so I'm actually going to go ahead and bust out the Terra Bug here, and that's because defensively it helps me a whole lot versus Mammoth Swine. Plus, I know that, I mean, even with, with the Reflect Up, I should be able to just take one hit. So, I go for that Terra Bug just because I'm going to end up busting it out anyway. We pull out the antennas, and now we're looking all crystallized and crazy. And as I bust out the agility, we are now going to be guaranteed faster than everything they've got in the back. So it turns out they actually do have the coverage with Stone Edge, but luckily for us, 
Stone Edge always misses, and that is extremely nice because now I can fire off that first Fury Cutter. Now, half of the battle with trying to get this to work is getting that first Fury Cutter out of the way. Now, with that Terra, it does do a nice little chunk to it, and they do actually connect on the next Stone Edge, but behind that Reflect, we're a bulky fella, and I am able to take it nicely. Now, I can fire off the second Fury Cutter, which, after all the boosts, especially the Terra, is now a 288 power move, which is definitely enough to take care of the Mammoth Swine. And now, it's just exponential kind of just damage at this point. After this next hit, we got a 672 move in the chamber, and as they're able to bring in the Incineroar, bad news is we get intimidated, which is not always great. However, you know, 672 from a Fury Cutter is gonna be able to do a ton, and check it out. With, even through the Intimidate, Incineroar just straight up goes down. So once you get to that third Fury Cutter, there's like, there's hardly any stop in this guy. You're just out here mowing him over, which is amazing. So at this point, we've got the third out of the way. In comes the Hatterene, and with the Stealth Rock to guarantee there's no nonsense focus sashes, we're just continuing to mash A at this point. Another Fury Cutter. This is a fun one with that 768 power. And uh, the, the multipliers are literally, they're, they're wild. Here. So at this point, they have two Mons left, neither of which want to have any anything to do with taking one of these Fury Cutters as they're going to bring in the Clydeser. The big meaty claws is looking like freaking lunch over here. And we're going to leave no leftovers. So they're actually going to go ahead and run. The bad news about this strategy is if you do get it rolling, people just, people just dip out. They're like, yeah, that's... I've seen enough, which honestly I don't blame them because it's absolute nonsense. And that is going to do it. <laughs> so thank you guys very much for watching. I do appreciate the support. I will say that obviously this is not reliable and most of the time this doesn't work out, but I was able to get it to go for at least a little bit for a couple of them, which is a win in my book. Now, thank you guys once again. I will uh, catch you next time. Peace out.